Alrighty then, it's time for two Jungle Jarvan games. Let's get this show on the road. Which one? So, have you ever wondered how a game can be lost so quickly after one little mistake? Well, wonder no further. However, if you'd rather not wonder about builds, then look no further than UGG, a website that can help you with builds for any champion you play, especially during this new chaotic preseason. If you're wondering what the pros are playing, you can look that up too. If you're wondering what counters your champions, that's available as well. If you simply want to find what is OP and spam it, then you can learn that as well. And best of all, UGG will help you in figuring out how to get started. So if you're wanting to update your build, figure out a build, or were forced into being supporter market, and have no idea what to build, then head over to UGG. Anyways, my bottom lane basically told me they're not going to help me leash, so I tried going to the enemy blue buff. I was spotted by the Renekton, as you can see when I took off Fog of War, he was scouting around the area. That's a good top lane teammate, pretty much defending his blue and preventing me from starting there. I still going to take it a level 2, since it's in Italy and her pathing might be a little bit you know, predictable. She sees it, she comes to try to investigate it, but because I lost the uh, Fog of War, I wasn't able to damage her as much as possible. Still though, it was pretty good. And then this gank of mine is absolutely atrocious. I should be ashamed of myself. But either way, I take some mid lane CS and XP, I go and secure my blue buff so Nidalee can't steal it, and then I clear it a little bit. It's pretty good, honestly, because I put her down, and considering she's a faster jungler than me, and she's still kind of a control jungler, uh, she could have dealt with me very, very easily if she knew what she was doing at the very least. Um, I wasn't assuming that she didn't. I was just saying, you know, if she's a good Nidalee jungler and I didn't keep her down, she could have put me down rather easily. So uh, a little bit of that aggression was a bit of a risk for me, but it was necessary in order to, you know, make sure she didn't just crush me. So yeah, Jungle Nidalee is like one of my most hated jungle opponents, simply because, uh, also I don't know, I think I just missed, I did not aim that Q properly, but whatever. Yeah, I just hate her, because a good Jungle Nidalee against certain matchups who are a lot, you know, slower or a lot more vulnerable, she just hunts them down, and there's very little they can do to avoid being countered by her. Like, you try to gank her, I mean, gank somebody, and then she just shows up. You try to farm, and then she just pierces you out of random. Like, she just controls everything. So, I mean, thankfully, they nerfed her to the ground a long time ago, so she's not as deadly as before. And of course, you know, keystones and all the runes and all that other stuff pretty much helped bring her demise. But either way, this game is going so far so good. There is a certain message that I already sort of outlay, you know, laid out in the beginning of the game. But you'll see when that happens. And then the second game makes it a little bit more obvious. But either way, right now, just trying to make some ganks happen. Uh, I go with the explosive plant, but my teammates aren't. And this isn't warded, apparently. But my teammates aren't making it obvious or, you know, helpful for me to try to gank something. You know, preferably Blitzcrank would pull somebody and I would jump into the fray. So it mostly just wasted my time. I go put a ward down. Blitzcrank finally goes in. I go back, but Nidalee shows up at this point. So we just kind of, you know, look at each other awkwardly and walk away. Because there's nothing that really much can be done. Then Blitzcrank is going to, I believe, try to go for a ward right now. And I'm going to try to attack him with an EQ. Go on him. But then, like, Oriana helps, but she has, like, a very slow response to it. And she doesn't really pop her ultimate. I think the ball relocates itself or something. But we kill Blitzcrank. I flash over. But Lucian puts himself in a very bad spot. But he gets saved by the Oriana and just barely makes it out alive. So, that's you know, it could have gone a lot worse. But it also could have gone a lot better. But, you know that happened it's unfortunate that for some reason on this account the all chat simply can't be turned on because the all chat was mostly funny because the enemy team or the Velkaz is just non-stop shit talking to Gragas we're saying he's playing a scrubby champion he can't see us and the only reason he's winning is because Gragas is OP but you know I mean if you've if you died a mid lane Gragas because you put uh, put yourself out of position be away from your minions you kind of deserve to die and here Cat's Renekton at his tower, obviously since he's stinging me, he's going to hit him, and it's honestly a pretty good gank despite the fact that I died, because I wasn't really trying to do anything there, it just happened to be a gank of a, or a counter gank of opportunity, um, I basically took him down with no mana, and, and him at basically full health, so it's pretty worthwhile, although he does have, you know, two kills and a lot of CS, it keeps Jackson breathing room, and now, 
Uh, the, the trap for everyone is always dragon. We push the enemy team away from this because we have most of our ultimates and most of our stuff up. So we go for the dragon and they honestly should have just let this go. But, you know, Blitzcrank got a little bit too hooky and then he just gets CC down or slow down and then eventually beat down. Uh, and then we just sort of catch all the stragglers who they all didn't run away properly. So we wiped them out, essentially. I mean, Jax kills his own opponent, I believe, but we absolutely destroy them. We catch Nidalee and destroy her too, and that is a devastating fight, all right? This is how it goes. They started Dragon, we stole it from them, and then they still, they were trying to get it. It was just an Earth Dragon. They should just let that go. As a result, they all died, and my team got a share amount of kills on, and look at the kill spread of my team. It's really beautiful. It's spread out very nicely. Four on Magdalen Gragas, who's pretty much going to be our nuker. Lucian having good CS and kills. Uh, that dragon fight is one of those things where they collectively made a really bad decision. Because even if they had gotten it, it wouldn't have been a... They would have still overcommitted to it. And it would just not have been a good trade-off. The dragon was not worth the amount of, you know, well, risk they took on doing so. So... As a result now, we get to snowball from that because the consequence of that risk or is was so severe. Uh, that's kind of what I'm going with. Like the dragon means nothing to how badly it could have uh, how badly it ended up messing them up. As a result of that bad dragon fight, we just kind of just, you know, start snowballing because for my figure we'll play in this game is that the enemy team wasn't necessarily bad it, and you know, they seemed to be on par with my team. It's just when you give, when you're finding equal players, one if you're both on equal grounds, whoever makes the first mistake is gonna lose. That's kind of a principle of a lot of games or a lot of things, right? Whoever makes the makes the worst draw or whoever makes the with the worst move or takes the worst risk and doesn't pay off, essentially that. So now we have a lot of map control. We have Harold on our side. The enemy team is struggling to kind of make up an offensive. I'm building myself tankier just so I can put myself in the fray and get all their collective aggro on top of myself and hopefully, you know, the Gragas blows someone up or the Lucian does something. So, no, even though normally I would, in this kind of situation, like to go AD Jarvan, I actually was showing respect to the enemy team because their farm is on par with ours. So they are not bad. It's just that mistake really made a big damn difference. So I'm building tanky Jarvan or tankier Jarvan, by the way. I don't know why that EQ did knock up Jar uh, Renekton. I'm building tankier Jarvan to respect the fact that they're probably going to do team fights as well as we would. But anyways... Hit him, so to control him. The Jax right here is just is way too strong now. I re-engaged the fight, which also I don't know how that EQ just sort of flubbered about out there. Uh, they turned it around because it obviously it was kind of a four four v two point five kind of thing, and that's sort of what I mean. They're pretty pretty good too, or at least on par with my team. Ha. <sighs> Anyways, though, I also want to answer a little bit of critique somebody had from the last video where I always say, you know, that I, that I rate team comps or uh, based on, you know, their team fight potential. It's true sometimes, but not always. I just think a team full of pure split pushers isn't the best thing in solo queue because all it takes is one person making a really big mistake and then just completely lose all your momentum. Anyways... Uh, we catch Vokas, we destroy Blitzcrank, and then the enemy team decides to, you know, commit to a fight. But it's, I, it's something I wouldn't really recommend because they burned a lot of their resources. Sure, they killed two of us, uh, but now they've kind of put themselves in a really weird position. And the biggest hitters of my team are still alive. And they don't have the resources or positioning to do anything really big about that. So two of them just got absolutely giga melted. And then they, I believe the Nidalee just runs off all scared. So, yeah, that was a little bit, once again, kind of a, a huge gamble. But honestly, kind of a gamble I need to be taking at this point because there's a sort of thing with card, like a card game uh, rule. You know, if you're, not, if you're playing not to lose, then you're not playing to win, so you won't win, something like that. And in a situation uh, that they're in right now, they kind of have to be playing to win. And in doing so, they have to just pretty much go all balls out risky. But, you know, all it takes is us catching a few of them off guard, and then we just sort of win. Because then again, team fights which just go really well in our favor. And as a result of that, catching a couple people, it just sort of domino effect, and we caught the rest of them and wiped them out. And with that, this was, for all intents and purposes, 
pretty good because both team comps were rather competent and I mean the players as well. It just sort of, that one little situation at the dragon fight kind of snowballed the hell out of the game. Now, this game is a peculiar one because there's a support Shaco on the enemy team and they don't really have an initiator and there's a lot of weird early game shenanigans. Anyways, really regular start with blue red and I mean, you know, just going for my blue, but then for some reason the Camille's try to steal it and sort of notice how I'm pathing here. I'm putting her in between me and the blue buff just so the blue buff beats her ass too. So, you know, gave me a huge advantage in that little fight, forcing her to just kind of run away. I, I, she was being very cheeky there, trying to steal blue buff. She, Camille is not a fast clearing jungler, so she wouldn't have been able to sneak that. Then she just sort of invades me and takes the, the chicken, and then she's going to take the Krugs as well, because, you know, I'm hurt, so obviously I'm not going to go defend it right now. So... This is sort of a behavior that I really don't like with a lot of junglers where they think it's like, oh, I'm so much more badass when I do this thing. I'm like, sure enough, you do. But the way you did it only worked because you either caught someone by surprise because it's not a smart thing to be doing on a, such a weird... I mean, not the best jungler to be doing that kind of shenanigans on. Though Jarvan is admittedly a pretty weaker jungler in the early game. So, But still, though, it's like, you know... You, you have a better focus of what you should be doing because in this case Camille needs to try to attempt needs to attempt to win the lanes for her teammates or at least put them in a better uh, better edge but she's not so she their their lanes are getting punished as you can see bottom lane I mean it, I know it's a, it's a off support like Vagar and a very off support like Shaco but my bottom lane right now has the advantage simply because they can play more aggressively and push at them here I catch Victor and it's a bad gank mostly because the EQ misses and it's super awkward because Jace had to chase for a long time. But we do still get the kill. And as you can see though, like, I mean, Camille does get a kill against the Vladimir, but whatever. But here we go. They go for the dragon because it's Inferno, but it's a trap. They were all such low health with so little mana and they obtained it anyways. And they got so mega punished for that. A triple kill against the enemy team and the dragon is stolen this is again one of those situations where it just kind of loses you the game i mean the shake of rage quitting because of that is pretty much game losing as well but those are the types of situations where it's like you're not respecting the enemy team's willingness to kill you so you just sort of let that kind of you know you you just let that blind you that greed getting dragon is pretty good pretty important but damn that was not a good call like, it's one of those situations where when you see how weak you're becoming, you should just back off and then hope for the best, not force it. You see it a lot with Barons, you know, where people go for Baron and it's beating their asses and it's just like, you know, just back off. Don't even try it. Like, you can calculate it in your head. You're not going to beat it before it murders you. I mean, they would have definitely got it if they had backed away and just let the healthier champions tank it and keep going. But, you know, my team caught wind of that and they were going to harass them out regardless. So that dragon was probably not going to happen. So either way, at this point, yes, the enemy team is just kind of beaten because, I mean, even if the Shaco didn't leave, the lanes themselves just kind of got absolutely destroyed. The, the early advantage we got because of that dragon, the Camille kind of wasting a lot of time doing whatever she was trying to do and not helping the lanes out allowed Vlad and Jace and me to get a huge edge. So now we can just sort of snowball kill every single lane every single time my ultimate is off and whatnot. So it's just a lot of bad mistakes that just snowballed out of control very early and guaranteed a loss. And there we go. And if you like this video, remember to give it a like. And if you aren't subscribed, make sure to subscribe. And if you are subscribed, make sure to hit the little bell up there somewhere so you actually get notifications to my videos because YouTube and stuff.